Okay. So hi everybody. Uh, my name is Julien Fortin. I'm a French software engineer and I work for Cumulus Networks. I work on If Up Down 2, uh, a Python project that we upstream last fall. And I'm the new Debian maintainer of this project. So the goal of this talk is to introduce you to the project if you don't already know about it. And to give you an update on the progress, on the progress we've made since the last release in October. So the outline of the talk. So I'm going to give you a little bit um, of a background of who we are. And that sets the context of why we developed if up down 2. I'm going to tell you what's the problem with if up down and give you a general overview of the capability of if up down 2, what we added since last October, uh, a few words about where we're going and how to contribute and I will answer some questions. So a little bit more about me. Uh, I'm not a networking engineer. I'm not a networking specialist. I'm a software engineer interested into operating system development. I did my undergrad internship at Cumulus Networks in 2014. And after that, I took a few networking classes. Uh, now I'm doing my, uh, I was hired four months ago by Cumulus Networks uh, and I joined the If Up Down 2 team. And I will graduate sometime this fall. So the ones who already know about If Up Down 2 may know Rupa. She is the, the author of If Up Down 2. So the project started in late 2014, 2013, uh, and the first commit was about 2,000 lines of Python. And as of yesterday night, we had 618 commits for about 18,000 lines of Python. So what is Cumulus? Cumulus is a software company. We designed Cumulus Linux, a Debian-based Linux distribution for networking switches. Our latest version, Cumulus 3.0, is based on Debian Jesse. And so our philosophy, we really want to let you manage your networking switches just like you do with your own servers. You can write your own app or install your own app just like you would do in Debian or use standard Linux tools. Cumulus is also contributing back to the community. Uh, we upstream, upstreamed a lot of patches, kernel patches, mostly related to networking. So we try, for example, to add more support to Netlink uh, when it comes to configuring network interfaces. Or we also contribute to some user space packages like STP. So you may know about if up down. So it's the default network manager for Debian. You can configure your network uh, in a static file, etc. network interfaces. And the network interfaces are represented by iFace sections. So what is wrong about it? So first, it's written, it's written in C, so it's really hard to maintain or to extend. Second, if up down doesn't understand inter interface dependencies. The complexity, the complexity increases with large number of interfaces. Um, if you have a large number of interfaces in your file, you have to keep it order so that the dependencies are respected. And so let's say you have 52 switch ports. Uh, I don't know, 2,000 VLANs, 100,000 uh, bridges, and a few more thousand VXLANs. You can do it by hand. Uh, I mean, good luck, yeah, good luck doing it by hand. Um, and if up down doesn't have support for incremental changes on live configuration, you have to bring down the interface, make your, mo make your modification, and bring it, bring it up again. Uh, there's also a lack of tools to query and validate, validate the running configuration. So it's super hard to troubleshoot, troubleshoot your network. So our solution is a backward compatible re-implementation of if up down in Python. With a pluggable architecture with Python add-on modules, um, you can add your own um, support or extend the IF up down to behavior to support your own protocol. Um, we also generate a graph of all the inf interfaces to resolve uh, dependencies and, and yeah, end all the relationship between them. We also added a few capability to, to add support to incremental changes and query live configurations. 
I'm going to give you examples in the following slides. So how does it work? Um, we have a core containing the parser, a graph generator, and some other things. Then the interfaces are scheduled in order, and the add-on takes care of the configuration of each specific attribute. In this case, you can see a small example with a bridge. Uh, on the right, you see that you see the iFace object uh, inside, if I've done two, and then you see which add-ons take, takes care of what. And so each module is able to tell what are their, what are their dependencies. And then, yeah, we build this graph of all the interfaces and we schedule them in order. So here you have an example of a small topology with a bridge on top uh, with three bridge ports, so three VLANs. Um, so we sort this graph and it, it, it gives us this list of interfaces to uh, schedule in order. Um, so we also have built-in device supports. So I have done to implicitly recognize VLAN and physical interfaces um, that appear as, depend as dependence. And so we do the, the minimal requirements to bring them up, even if you don't specify them in your configuration. So here, for example, in your interface file, there's no need to specify SWP1234 or even the VLANs. Um, this is another example. I hope you can see it. Uh, now showing the capability that we added to IF query. So we added an option uh, to let you query the dependencies of a specific interface. And you can see the re results in plain text, JSON format, or dot format. Um, if query is, if query, um, is now able to, uh, to check the running state of the interfaces and to tell you if everything is okay or not. So in this example, I wrote the configuration from the previous side into the ETC network interfaces file. Um, and then I, I executed IF reload, which is a new command that we added. I'm, gonna, I'm going to talk about it a little bit after. And then we, you can use IF query dash dash check to validate, to check uh, the, validate, uh, the validation of your applied state uh, against the user configuration. Uh, yeah, you can see here that there's some failures because of the address attribute. Yeah, just don't, don't ask me why. Another practical use case of the new IF query is the running option. So you can create a temper, a live topology using, for example, IP route 2. So here I create a bound and a bridge. And then you can use IF query to, uh, to see the live configuration of these interfaces. And then you can cut the result of IF query to your ETC network file. So I have, I have done, sorry, I have done two works on uh, already up or down interfaces. Uh, we query the running state of the interface and we only apply the difference between the user configuration and the running configuration. So let's say you have a bridge with two ports and you want to add a new port. You can just run EF, EF up on, on your bridge and it will add it automatically. So here is the example. So at the beginning, I have a bridge. Uh, if I run if query check on the bridge, it will tell me that it failed because the bridge is not up yet. <coughs> then I do IF up, then check again. Everything passes. Then I remove um, one of the bridge ports with IP route 2 and run check again. So it fails. It, it tells me what is wrong. But if I do IF up again, it will apply the delta between the user configuration and the running configuration and add the missing bridge port. I will take... Yeah. Uh, can you remove stuff as well or just add stuff? Yes. You can remove, add, modify, 
whatever you want. So IF reload is a new command that we introduced. So basically, it runs IF down on all the interfaces you remove from your, com your configuration, and it will run IF up on the interfaces that you changed uh, from your configuration. So it's pretty convenient rather than using service networking restart, for example. Uh, we also added support for JSON format for input and output commands. So you can provide a configuration written in, in JSON. So this is super good for automation and orchestration tools. Templating. So all if I have up done two commands support micro style uh, templates. So the goal was to reduce the size of the configuration file, which is easily can get to uh, several thousand lines. So here's a quick example how to create 100 bridges in a few lines. So here is the list of the various add-ons that we currently have within ifopdown2 package. So what's new since October 2015? So we've added support for VLAN fil filtering in ifopdown2, uh, two new add-ons, uh, VXLAN, VRF, uh, we increased performances with Netlink, and we introduced a policy manager, which lets you, yeah. Yes, no, yes, okay. Uh, so I had an earlier question about uh, um, uh, the general architecture. Mm -hmm. um, you are using uh, IP and BRCTL commands to configure stuff? Yes, Netlink? both. So at the beginning, we started by a full use, use of uh, Linux commands. But now we are moving towards uh, a full Netlink backend to, to increase performances. I'm going to talk about it in a later slide. So the new bridge driver. So the Linux, Linux kernel now supports VLAN array bridges, also called VLAN filtering mode. And I have done to supports both traditional and the bridge uh, VLAN aware mode. So it helps with scale and yeah, it's cool. So I have an example here. So here's a quick example of how you would configure um, in both the traditional model and the new VLAN aware mode for 200 VLANs. VXLAN. So VXLAN is a networking overlay. Uh, it encapsulates layer two frames into layer three UDP packets. Uh, it kind of solves the, lim the VLAN limits, uh, where you can only have 4,000 4, VLANs. Now you can have 16 million VXLAN. I have an example here of a small topology with the configuration that you would use in if I've done two to configure it. So very light. Um, Practical. VRF, so virtual routing and forwarding is a IP technology that provides uh, traffic isolation at layer three for routing. It was developed by Cumulus Networks and upstream um, inside Linux. It's now available in kernel 3.4.3 uh, and higher. So this is a small example of how you would configure a VRF called RED with two slave SWP1, SWP2, sharing uh, a forwarding table, ID 1001. Um, so if you specify VRF table auto, IF of down 2 will pick an, av an available table ID for you. Um, so the new policy infrastructure let uh, our users define default values for add-ons. It also let the users define uh, values to override system default and set some set specific behavior for each add-ons. So right now, most of the add-ons supports it. We are working on moving all of them uh, complying to this, to this new policy infrastructure. And it was written by Sam from Cumulus. 
and have a small example of the policy file. So it's written in JSON. So you can specify that the default MTU will always be uh, 1,500 if you don't specify it. Um, Bridge STP will always be on, etc., etc. So when it comes to performances, I would say so far so good. Uh, IF up down two scales uh, scales okay, but we think we can do better. So for example, right now I would say that it takes about three to two to three minutes to uh, configure a uh, thousand bridges, thousand VLAN, and a thousand VXLAN. Something like that, yeah, three, three minutes. So what costs us time is to execute IP and sub commands. So we really believe that, the net, that Netlink is the answer. And so Netlink is a, an IPC mechanism, um, mainly for kernel and user space communication. Uh, for example, IP Route 2 uses Netlink. But we want to, uh, to move out from the use of IP Road 2 and have a pure Netlink backend. Uh, in the case uh, that our user don't use a kernel that have all the capabilities that we're looking for, we'll use IP Road 2 commands for some cases. Uh, for the Netlink uh, work, we are using an in-house uh, Python, Python library written by Daniel, Daniel Walton. So it's called Python NL Manager. So it's not yet on Debian. It should be soon. Uh, so right now we are including the, the sources within IF down 2. I hope you can see that. So this is an example of uh, like a random topology. Uh, on your left, there's the IF up down um, configuration, and on the right, the if up down to configuration for the same topology. And we are not even using templates here. So thanks to our sponsor, if up down to is available on Debian Seed and JC Backport since October 2015. <coughs> so we pushed a few minor fixes, but we plan to um, to do a more major release before the freeze. I'm going to talk about it after. So you can download uh, the sources uh, and build the dev or just add the, the seed packet, the seed repository to your source list. So what's next? So we plan on releasing a version 2.0 before the code freeze in December. Uh, it should really increase performances and there is some features that we might add uh, but we have to talk about it internally. It's not 100% decided yet. And we keep fix fixing bug fi uh, bugs uh, reported by the community and the community clients. So how to get started with us? So IF Updown 2 is available on GitHub, as well as the documentation, even though we need to update it. Uh, if Updown 2 ships by default as the, as the default networking manager, uh, since Cumulus Linux 2.1. And you can get in touch with me or Rupa, that's her emails. And I want to take a second to, uh, to show you an example of contribution. So this contribution was made three weeks, three weeks ago. Uh, it was about 200 lines of code and it adds support for Batman, which is a layer two pro protocol for mesh networking. I didn't know about it before, but well, that's, that's pretty cool. And finally, I want to conclude with some numbers. So uh, 1.5 million plus uh, switch po ports are powered by Cumulus Linux. All of them use if up down two to, uh, to be up or down basically. Um, and this tool is used in production by more than 400 companies all over the world. If you have questions, thank you so much for your attention. Hello. Uh, I would like more information about uh, VXLAN's uh, implementation. Mm -hmm. uh, on the configuration you saw, can you put yeah. the slide back, please? 
This one? Yeah. That one? Uh, no, no, this one. So, uh, are you using some... You have overlay, but uh, is there anything in the configuration to communicate uh, about the state of the XLAN between two switches, or do you have a controller uh, in this configuration, or is it... The I'm not super familiar with the implementation de details within Linux, but I have done to just configure the... So just statics of XLAN, so there's no controller or anything? You can do it without a controller, yes. And you can do it with a controller. Okay. But I'm not 100% sure on that. And how is it compatible with uh, the bridge over mode? Because last time I checked, it was a bit difficult to mix the bridge over mode and the VXLAN setups. Uh, has that changed or...? In, in if I've done two, you mean? Or, or well, in Cumulus Linux in general? I would have to double check on that, but I don't think that there should be an issue. Uh, we are trying to, um, to make the configuration very easy for our users, especially since Cumulus 3.0. So we're introducing a lot of new things to let you um, do it more easily. Mm. But yeah, I'm not 100% sure. Um, uh, first of all, uh, thanks for your great work, uh, because lots of things you described is basically what I, as previous maintainer of If I've Done, always wanted to do and never found enough time to implement that. Uh, actually, I also wanted to port If I've Done to uh, some script and language, though it was something else that, than Python. <laughs> but anyways, um, uh, just I wanted to tell a couple of things I noticed. Uh, first of all, about... Well, let me, let me start from the end, from the l l last slide. You, you mentioned you've got this uh, Python NL Manager yeah. package almost prepared, and I noticed that you, you have actually uploaded it to your uh, private uh, Devon package repository. Just one thing, please always, package, uh, please always publish the source packages you use to generate devs, because otherwise I, I could have just downloaded it and uploaded it to Debian like in f five minutes. But now I see the only a dev file there and no sources for it. And um, otherwise, I could have sponsored it okay. during the talk. You see. Yes, I see. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Um, then w one more thing. Um, you mentioned that you're going to have some discussions in pro uh, within the company about some certain features. Could you please also uh, not do a discussion? It's only within your company, but mm -hmm. well, basically, um, ages ago, I have created a mailing list for IF up down related discussions, okay. which nobody used ever, <laughs> including me, uh, because uh, I was the only person maintaining it, so I had basically no one to discuss things with. Uh, but now, when uh, there's a certain group of people interested in this technology related, I think it would be really great if you uh, personally and as a company, mm -hmm. could uh, coordinate with uh, the current maintainer of IFAP Down, who is, which is uh, Goose Sleepen, or I'm not sure how it's properly pronounced, but I think so. And because um, he's really actively developing IFAP Down now. Um, and uh, there are certain features which are obviously not that revolutionary as in, in, in your product, but still, I think it would be cool if you could coordinate. Uh, okay. So that the features don't get implemented differently. Okay, sure. Uh, I will come to you, talk to you after, and you will give me the email okay. of the mailing list, and I make sure we okay. talked. Talk. Uh, and uh, th th thanks again for your work. You're welcome. Thank you. So the question is, what do we plan to do next with if up down two? If we want to uh, replace if up down or what's up? So to answer your question, uh, 
I would say that the original goal was maybe to replace if up down, but now it's not anymore because there is all the system D network D thing. Uh, but our use case requires a scriptable and templatable uh, network network manager where you can plug your own add-ons. So that's what that's why we did it basically. Um, I think our goal is just to um, to keep adding features and let it available as an option for everybody. But we'll keep using it as the main, as the default networking manager in Cumulus Linux. But we probably don't want to replace IF up down to IF up down anymore because I mean IF up down is dying and is going to be replaced by System D, Network D, and everything else. I'm not an, I, yeah, I'm not entirely, entirely sure that there's a wide agreement about that. I mean, I asked okay. a question okay. during the system D talk about uh, system D network D, and it's not clear that uh, it's going to be, well, what are the plans for it? Yeah, the thing is, this is Python, and there is no Python in the, in the Debian Essential on the minimal build, so this is a problem. Yeah, so Bureau said, okay. Python would have to be promoted to uh, Essential or something like that in Debian, because uh, which I would be very happy <laughs> to do, but uh, that probably will not happen. So that's uh, that's the main reason probably why high up yeah. up down uh, two could not be in the default. But if ever, yeah. Python is in Debian Essential, we would maybe become the default networking manager. Uh, yeah, I, I also plan to uh, port in, when, when I, I mentioned I plan to port in uh, if up down to some script language, uh, to some script language, uh, mm -hmm. but I met some resistance from some people because, well, well, basically there were not many options regarding the script language and most of ideas I had were really opposed to because like, okay, you're not going to include one more script language into the base system just because you want to use it. Mm. Just stick with it and that's it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I guess we'll see. And another question I had about the uh, general uh, strategy was, uh, do you see it as a um, free software project with a real open development model? It kind of echoes what you asked earlier. Uh, or do you see it as an internal project from Cumulus that happens to be released as free software? How do you grade it? Uh, um, so the, well. Okay. So the license is GPL v2. Um, I think it will, as long as this is not in Debian Essential, I think Cumulus will be the main contributor, but we will accept any external help. How many external contributions do you have? Or external contributors do you have? Uh, as far as I know, there's this one, the Batman thing. Uh, I'm not aware about anything else. But it's because the, the project was only upstream, upstreamed in October. And I would say we need to make some improv improvements on maybe the documentation and, and the, the add-on modules maybe a little bit. And yeah, the version is, is yeah, like eight months eight month old or something like that. And the internal version is much more advanced. So that's what we plan to upstream before. Oh, so, we, so you have an internal version that isn't public? Um, so we upstream most of the commits a few. But you have the upstream, I don't understand why. You, uh, I mean, we pushed on GitHub most of the commits on the master branch, we have a Debian prep branch, which is for Debian, but this one is like a few months behind uh, because the tool internally is made for Cumulus Linux. So we have to make uh, some changes and backport it to Debian. There's not a, lot of, uh, not a lot of work to do. It's just that we don't have that much cycle to spend on that. We need to um, fix bugs for customers and stuff like that. So the, I would say the upstream work 
comes after. The internal repository, is it, isn't it published as well? No, it's a Cumulus Linux private, a Cumulus Linux Networks repository, but most of the code is on the master branch in, on GitHub. Um, is there some support for a network namespace? Not yet. But that's one of the features that we are thinking about. So actually, I had another question, so sure. uh, mostly a technical one. You said that uh, you plan to use, to port it to Netlink to, for yeah. performance reason, yeah. but still to use IPwood2 when the kernel doesn't have all the capabilities. Yeah. But I understood that, I understood uh, IPwood2 are just uh, basically the client side that uses Netlink for everything. So uh, mm -hmm. I guess I'm wrong. So can you give an example of capabilities that... I don't have an example in mind, but just in case that the kernel you might use, uh, maybe it would be three point, uh, 4 point something, and the uh, newest version will be 4 point, I don't know, 8, 9, or 5, someday. Um, so if I've done two, we'll try to uh, keep up with the kernel API. But if you're using your old kernel and... Um, Yeah, okay, I, I get your question, yeah. I would say just in case. Uh, and we, can, we also want to let the user the, the choice, Netlink or IP, or IP route too. That's also one reason. No more question? Okay. Um, uh, how do you find, uh, I'm switching context, going more into the Debian derivative thing that you have in mm -hmm. Cumulus. So how do you find Debian interaction or do you have any note or comment about, about being a Debian derivative is, or how could Debian help your derivative? Um, so yeah, we are Debian based, but we also contribute a lot back to the community. We upstream most of the kernel patches that we are doing. Um, otherwise, I'm not really aware of like specific comments on Cumulus Linux. Uh, I think, yeah, our customer like it. Uh, and the Debian community is fine with us as long as we upstream what we do. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Awesome. So we have a really great relationship, as I see. Yeah, <laughs> cool. yeah I would say yes. Why not? <laughs> Any more questions? Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, is there any progress in Python Freeport? No. Oh. <laughs> Maybe sometime next year, but yeah, it's mostly because Cumulus Linux ships with Python 2. And so if Cumulus Linux would switch to Python 3, we would work on that. Yeah. That, that somehow concerns me a little bit because, you know, in Debian there are plans to switch for Python 3 and also with the private repository thing, mm -hmm. uh, which is a little bit like the Virtual Box story, which you have private and public, uh, not really Virtual Box, but other projects. So this is something which concerns me if you want to have that in Debian. Okay. Yeah, we, we are keeping a private repo because, yeah, most of the work is for Cumulus Linux first, kind of, and the repo might contain uh, some, uh, in some information about clients or bugs that are not public, I would say. Uh, I don't know if we are going to change that, 
Uh, yeah, I, I can ask internally to see what's the plan. But I'm not sure what we're going to do about it. Uh, well, maybe you relay my answer. Yes. I, I see concerns on that one because that calls for troubles if uh, upstream is not, is basically closed. And that's what you're telling me. You have more commits upstream, which is closed. And you say now you will commit them back to a free version, but I do not see any guarantees here if the development is not done in open. OK, I understand your concerns. Uh, but uh, yeah, I will relate the question. And, and if there is configuration data available, they should be maybe not in repository. Yeah, yeah. we try not to. No, actually, I'm just curious about Cumulus Network's business model. Uh, what does it sell licenses for the operating system? Yes. Is, is it f like the Red Hat model where everything is free and you uh, you provide that? <laughs> no, so basically we sell licenses and supports. And we sell different types of license licenses depending on the hardware you're using. So 10 gig, 40 gig, 100 gig. But everything is free inside Cumulus? Free inside Cumulus Linux? Um, I would say that pretty much everything is open source except one main private driver that is basically the value of Cumulus Linux. Cumulus networks, yeah. Oh, the private driver is not from, for, from the network switch vendor? No, that's a Cumulus network thing. Any other questions? Okay, thanks. So my, my my dad is watching live from France. So hi, dad. But he doesn't he, he doesn't understand English. So hi.